Assalamu alaikum. How are you guys? I find tip top. Okay. Today we will begin with the activities of chapter number two. So let's see the activity A. Here you have five questions to be answered. Uh, answer these questions. Okay. Uh, first question is why did Qasim go to Saudi Arabia? Uh, this is a very simple question. Uh, Qasim went to Saudi Arabia because he wanted to see his parents, especially his mother who was sick, who was ill, who was unwell. Question number two, why did Qasim come back from Saudi Arabia? Because he wanted not to miss his lessons anymore. Uh, that is why he did not stay uh, for a long period over there in Saudi Arabia, right? Uh, he was getting bothered about his studies. Question number three, what two subjects does Qasim find tough? English and Maths, okay, are the two subjects. Question number four, what has Qasim decided to do after his studies? He decided to go uh, for medical field if he get good uh, marks. Otherwise, uh, he has the plan to go into business or to opt for agriculture, right? Question number five is why does Qasim uncle, Qasim's uncle think that our English has to be good? Okay, because uh, his uncle was mindful, uh, no, his uncle is mindful of the importance or significance of English in today's world. He says that English is the international language, it is the language of science and technology, it is the language of the world, you can communicate with the world through this language. Okay, so uh, our English has to be good. Here comes a new topic uh, in the activity B that is about note of thanks. Okay, uh, many of you surely be unfamiliar of this okay, uh, note of thanks or letter of thanks. Okay, or thank you letter. Sometimes you have to write thank you letters or letter of thanks. Okay, when you are uh, indebted by anyone your friend, your uh, okay, uh, relations, etc. Right? What is it? Note of thanks. Okay, a note of thanks is also called a letter of thanks or thank you letter. That is used when one person or party wishes to express appreciation to and another. Okay. Personal thank you letters are sometimes handwritten in cases in which the addressee is a friend, acquaintance or relative. When you are uh, addressee, addressee means the person to whom okay, you are writing or the person you are writing to. Okay, you are receiver, the okay, listener. Right? So if he or she is your friend, are you an acquaintance? Okay, a relation you have relation? No, sorry. If he or she is your relative, then in those cases, uh, it uh, may be handwritten. And if you are writing a formal note of thanks or uh, for business purpose or okay or other official purposes, uh, so that should be. Uh, printed in printed form right not hand written one okay because uh, business letters are note of thanks related to uh, business affairs or official affairs uh, have to be formal that that it, it demands it needs formality much formality okay whereas note of thanks to your relations or friends okay do not need to have formality it doesn't require uh, okay formality right so that should be 
can return or that okay it it up it it's up to you okay whether uh, which way you uh, okay uh, want to write like a letter note of thanks has different parts like uh, date okay salutation this is salutation dear Ahmad, dear friend dear uncle okay uh, uh, dear mother dear father okay mr dash mr ceo etc etc okay this is called salutation this is date and this part from how to kind gift is body okay it is one of the important parts of a letter or a note of thanks right because it contains the message okay the addresser wants to say okay or convey just like uh, this is uh, an example of a note of thanks okay written by Ali Muhammad to his friend Ahmad why because he being uh, uh, remembered and gifted on the occasion of his birthday by his mm -hmm. friend Ahmad okay so he wants to uh, pay thank or gratitude to his friend Ahmad okay like how thoughtful of you to think of me on my birthday I truly appreciate the watch you gave and want you to know that every time I wear it I will think of you thank you so much for your kind gift All right uh, and okay sometimes your friend invite uh, invites you okay to a dinner let's suppose you have been invited by uh, one of your friends on a dinner so how should you write how should you take a start okay you may go for uh, it like okay dear friend thank you so much for inviting me to this grand feast or banquet okay i know that having uh, my exams impending or approaching can be uh, hard to manage but i will try to come in time see you soon okay thank you so much for inviting me you are sincerely and okay xyz uh, write uh, your name and date okay here is a, uh, an assignment for you uh, there is one of Tasim's friends prepared notes for him in the subjects of maths and English while Qasim was on leave. Qasim should write a note of thanks to him. Help Qasim in writing a note of thanks. Okay. Uh, so the assignment is to help, uh, you are to help Qasim in writing a note of thanks as you have just been uh, gone through uh, this topic. Okay. You have just uh, learned how to write a note of thanks okay you should be direct you should be to the point be concise be concrete do not go into extra detail okay just start with the main idea or message right so keep yourself concise and precise right okay here comes another activity that is activity F okay in which you have to say what word is used for okay if a person speaks good he will be a good speaker speaker right if a person is expert in digging the art of digging he should be called a digger digger okay and if a person is if a man is a good fighter he he should be called he is good at fighting he should be called okay fighter so just likewise you have 11 statements over there given okay just go for it to read it out read them out and okay uh, give them proper name right uh, they are 
they seem uh, so simple okay we have time so we shall start with the next chapter there is a poem on the ocean by st coleridge st coleridge is for samuel t for teller and coleridge okay who uh, was an english poet a literary critic and a philosopher right he was born on uh, in 1772 and passed away in 1834 right before starting this poem i will let you all know about some important poetic terminologies which will be helpful or conducive in understanding a poem when you uh, whenever you come across with a poem okay first of all i'll define what is a poem it is a composition or written in metrical feet right forming rhythmical lines okay this is what we call a poem right guys it means a poem is a collection of spoken or written words that expresses ideas or emotions in a powerfully vivid in a powerfully uh, clear or explicit an imaginative style a poem is comprised of a particular rhythmic and metrical pattern okay what is metrical metrical means the rhythmical arrangement of syllables syllables is what uh, what should i say it is the basic unit of english rhythm <coughs> okay it is a word or what part that makes rhythm the basic rhythm like okay metrical just look at this word metrical may free cul okay it has three rhythms it had it has three parts may free cul so this is a multisyllabic word having okay three syllables metrical okay and this is the word feet monosyllabic word it has only one syllable okay right so this is what we call syllable so the arrangement the rhythmical arrangement of words are syllable okay rhythm wise uh, arrangement of words in a line in a verse okay verse line uh, verse means lines okay and rhythmical means rhythmical means reoccurring okay with regular pattern rhythmical with a uh, rhythm right so a rhythm is there a regular arrangement of words or syllables are there in a poem so it is a composition like that <laughs> sorry okay the next term is stanza <coughs> what is a stanza a stanza is a fixed number of lines of verse forming a unit of poem okay simply stanza is a group of lines okay simple is it is okay there is a group of lines okay and that number of lines of verse make different stanza types like 
if a stanza has two lines or if a stanza comprises two lines okay the stanza will be couplet the, the stanza type will be couplet if there is there are three lines that will be tercet if four that is quatrains if five that is quintets if six if a stanza carries or contains six lines or verse verses that is called sestets and if there are eight lines in a stanza the stanza type would be octave and if there is no regular uh, okay pattern that there are uh, if there is no regular <coughs> okay division of lines in a poem or in a stanza okay the stanza type would be called strophes irregular uh, arrangement of uh, okay lines in a stanza is what we call strophes right <coughs> okay there is another term that is rhyme they are correspondence in the sound especially with respect to the last syllable or sound in a simple words you can say that <clears throat> okay the rick occurring of same sounds especially at the last syllable or the last sound that is called rhyme for example okay have a look okay on at this example twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are in this these lines a star or R and star R, okay. The rhyming words, since they have the same syllable, syllable that is ra, star R, okay, star R, right. And since, as far as the stanza is concerned, since the stanza uh, takes two lines, it will be couplet. The standard type will be the standard type is couplets, whereas the rhyming words are star and r. Right. We have some other important terminologies like space. Space is okay. The gap between each stanza is simply called okay. What space? This is what we call space. This is a stanza having four set of lines or verses so the stanza type of this poem is called quatrain having four a stanza having a stanza with four lines okay quatrain where is the gap between this uh, uh, stanza this stanza and this stanza these gaps are called space right and the other okay uh, terminology is called sentad okay this is the way a poem is arranged on a page so this is the overall arrangement of this poem okay upon this page or on this page that is what we call sentad right there is another term that is called free verse okay a poem that does not have rhyme okay are rhyming words is simply called free verse okay if the if a poet doesn't care of the rhyme scheme or rhyming words okay that sort of poetry or poems are called free verse the lines are free verse okay and uh, the last term related to poetry is figurative language or uh, figures of speech okay figurative language is special kind of writing poets often use to make their poem more interesting okay for example use of similes use of metaphors use of personification use of alliteration use of imageries are
called uh, okay figurative language they are called figurative language simile metaphor personification blah blah and blah right okay <coughs> here <coughs> we start with the poem on the ocean this poem has been taken from st coleridge's poem the rhyme of ancient mariner okay it is one of his influential poems okay which ranks among best in english literature this poem is about an old sailor okay sailor means a person who operates or who sails ships right boats so this poem is about an old sailor who describes his long story about a journey or voyage okay to the ocean while he along with his crew members were boarded okay on a ship during his journey okay his entire crew was killed right in this poem the poem narrates the hardships trials tribulations okay and dangers they had to encounter with they had to come across with while their journey okay so let's start dear students have a look at this part pre reading you have two questions okay given there first is have you ever seen an ocean <coughs> yes i'm pretty sure why because okay if you have seen the ocean with naked eyes or if okay few of you have visited the ocean <coughs> personally or <coughs> okay having visited over there like in karachi or uh, in gawadar okay most of you have surely seen an ocean in films in pictures okay in dramas in movies so you all <coughs> are familiar with ocean to define ocean i should say an ocean is a huge body of salt water it covers nearly 71% of earth surface okay it weighs 71% of okay the earth surface they contain almost 98% of all the water on earth 98% of all the water available on the earth there is one world ocean we have one world so we have one ocean but it is divided into five main areas namely the pacific the uh, the atlantic the indian the arctic and the southern southern is also called antarctic 
these are the area wise okay division of ocean okay have you got my points good the next question is how do you feel on a hot day what do you like to do okay on a hot day in summers especially so just let me say my experiences okay on a hot day in summers i do feel i do want to drink lots of what cold water okay and adjust the ac for mildly cool air or in the morning i would like to open the windows to welcome the cool okay chilly breeze right uh, moreover i would like to okay take a shower again and again to keep myself refreshing okay plus i will go to have lots of ice cream okay plus i will go out swimming okay if uh, i am to spend a hot day i while staying outdoors i will sit in the shade i would like to sit in a shade or shadow okay while having chilled watermelon right and 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 and, and i would also like to sit in shade or shadow outdoors while sipping cold soft drinks right these are my experiences and you will agree with me i'm sure right are you agree do you feel what as i feel okay dear students i think this is enough for today we will start reading the poem okay in the next lecture so thank you